today, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, June 16. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has pledged to take a proactive approach to dealing with crime and violence on the island. Mr. Holness asserts that his government will not be reactive to crime, but instead will be seeking long-term measures to reduce the crime rate. And we will make it a priority of the government to ensure that we have the resources that can match the level of sophistication, persistence of the criminal underworld that is causing havoc in our country. In the meantime, government is reporting a significant reduction in violence in schools due to its flagship safety and security in schools program. Robberies, 2012 to 2013, 23 were reported. 2014 to 2015, four, an 83% decrease. And the one that I'm, I'm very heartened by is that between 2012 and 2013, wounding, 52 were reported. In 2014 to 2015, that reduced to 25, a 52% reduction. Prime Minister Holness was giving the keynote address at Tuesday's launch of the Security and Ethics Conference in Kingston. He also revealed a decline in the reports of thefts, fights and weapons found in schools. Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck is reporting a 72% reduction in the number of new ganja offences before the courts. The minister was making his sectoral presentation in Parliament yesterday. He said this reduction was due to amendments to the Dangerous Drugs Act, which made some ganja breaches non-arrestable offences. In comparison to the 8,284 cases that went before the parish courts in 2014, there were only 2,285 in 2015. The amendments have also cleared up the criminal records of thousands. The expungement of persons who were convicted for ganja-related offenses, we have been able, and I now report, that nearly 4,000, 3,954 persons have had their records expunged and now have a clean police record. Government has made good on its promise to disburse funds to high schools earlier this year so they can adequately prepare for the 2016-2017 academic year. The first tranche of tuition support is usually provided in August, but the Education Ministry disbursed over $1.4 billion to high schools last week. So all high schools will now have received their first tranche of the four tranches that we have committed ourselves to, uh, amounting to $1.4 billion. They will be getting their second tranche in September, the third tranche will come in December, and the final one in April of 2017. Government had pledged the early disbursement of the funds following an announcement to abolish mandatory auxiliary fees in high schools. At yesterday's post-cabinet press briefing, the portfolio minister reiterated that parents who could afford it should continue to make voluntary contributions. Cabinet has approved three multi-million dollar road rehabilitation contracts to benefit three parishes. In St. James, the Roper Road will be rehabilitated by NF Barnes Construction and Equipment Company Limited at a cost of $42.9 million. The other two roads are in Hanover and Westmoreland. The rehabilitation of the Belvedere Theater Road in Westmoreland, contract valued $40.7 million, has been awarded to BF Pavements and Consultants. And the third one is the rehabilitation of the Haddington New Mills Road in Hanover, this contract has been awarded to DR Foot Construction with a value of $43.9 million. At this Monday's meeting, Cabinet also approved the development of housing solutions at Harbour Head. This is to be a joint venture with Wicon and will benefit the 2004 storm victims of Caribbean Terrace in St. Andrew. The land is owned by the government and we'll be, rather than taking payment for the land, we'll be deducting that cost from a number of units assigned to residents of Caribbean Terrace. The minister with responsibility for housing says that will reduce the cost for the units to those residents to between one and $1.5 million. And finally, the Ministry of Health and Heart Foundation of Jamaica are urging more Jamaicans to learn CPR. Director of Emergency Medical Services in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie says it is important for persons to be trained in CPR as they might be able to save the lives of persons who suffer sudden cardiac arrest. 
While addressing a GIS think tank on Tuesday, she said immediate application of CPR could double or triple a victim's chance of survival. We have seen certainly over the last couple of years that we have been having an increase in the amount of motor vehicle accidents that we are, we are responding to. But we want to emphasize that medical cases are our largest group of cases, calls that we receive, and the majority of these are as a result of cardiovascular issues. And so it is very important in this emergency cardiac care week and CPR week that we, um, we promote that this is a very vital area. Sudden cardiac arrest is a sudden, unexpected cessation of the heartbeat. And obviously when this occurs, there's no blood flowing and you are essentially dead. Now, within four to five minutes, if not, you know, intervention is placed, you die. Coronary heart disease is the number two cause of death in Jamaica, second to stroke, which together account for over 25% of deaths in the country. June 12 to 18 is being observed as CPR week, and activities marking the week conclude on Saturday with a mass CPR training session. It will be held at the Heart Foundation's offices at 28 Beachwood Avenue in St. Andrew. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching.